Hi, I'm Chris Mutel, and I'm here to tell you about one of the upcoming features in version 1.0 of the Brightway 2 Lifecycle Assessment Framework. For me, this feature is particularly exciting because it's the first one which was developed by someone outside of myself, the core Brightway 2 team, and was merged into the framework. You can see here on the Bitbucket site, we have a request from Bernhard Stoibing adding an activity and database browser. So let's check it out. The Activity and Database Browser is a command line tool to explore the different databases you have installed in your version of Brightway 2. Uh, because the Activity Browser remembers where you were working when you quit the last time, it's loaded me up right here with, the, with this activity in EcoEvent version 2.2, the Transmission Network, Electricity, Medium Voltage. Now, the way the Activity Browser works is I type in simple commands, such as I in this case, and I get some simple responses. I gives me information about the activity that I'm looking at. If I don't have a current activity selected, it'll tell me, and it'll tell me to get my act together. It's very opinionated. And in fact, you can see if I don't type in any commands, it gives me some various witty sayings. Also, I can type in things which don't, it doesn't understand, and it'll tell me it, makes, it doesn't understand that. Anyway, let's look again at this particular activity. Transmission network, electricity, medium voltage occurring in Switzerland. Its amount is 1, the unit is kilometers. The database is in as you can invent version 2.2. The ID is the internal ID assigned by Brightway 2, which is designed for computer, computer consumption, not for people. And we can see we list the number of technosphere inputs in need to make one kilometer of transmission network, and we can see that it's used by 69 different transforming activities in the Equinvent database. I can look in detail at those different inputs, biosphere flows, and downstream processes by typing the corresponding keys. For example, upstream, upstream in other words, uh, transforming activity outputs which are needed by this transmission network is U for upstream. And in this case, we can see that I have quite a few different kinds. Now, these are sorted by process name. I can also type in B for biosphere flows. In this case, we only have 10 different biosphere flows. If I type in D for downstream activities, this shows me which activities are consuming the reference product of the activity I'm currently looking at. In other words, all of these different electricity medium voltage processes need some transmission network in order to provide electricity to people. You can also see on the left-hand side that there are a bunch of different numbers. Every time I have a list of different processes, I can click, uh, I can't click, I can type in one of these different numbers, and that will switch me to whatever that option is. In this case, if I type in, for example, the number 8, it will switch me to electricity, medium voltage, and hungry. Again, I can type in I, see that I have some biosphere flows, I have some downstream flows, I have some upstream flows. There's quite a lot of different things that I can play with. And this is the main activity of the activity browser. It allows you to go around and ch click on different activities. And in fact, I can maybe just click on some activities at random as we're going along here. Uh, I've made my way to transport freight rail. And transport freight rail is used by quite a number of activities in EcoInvent. And in this case, my little paginator is telling me that I have 72, in fact 73, because I'm starting with the number 0 as the first page, different pages of activities. Now I can click on N to go to the next page, P to go to the previous page, but probably I don't want to click on N 50 times, and in that case I would click on, I'd type N space 50. That would bring me to page 50. No, P space 50 brings me to page 50. Okay, so lots of activities are using transport rail. What does transport rail itself need? So I look at the upstream different processes. Not so many, of course, it needs a locomotive, it needs some railway track, it needs to get rid of the railway track and the locomotive. It doesn't have any biosphere flows in and of itself, although, of course, the building the railway track and disposing of the railway track, similar leaf or the locomotive would that. Okay, so we've talked about how we can look at upstream and downstream processes. We've talked about the paginator and how we can get around the paginator. Of course, the paginator won't let you go too far back or too far forwards. Uh, we've talked about how the program is a little bit opinionated and has some things which hopefully will make you chuckle from 
time to time. But of course, because this is part of the Brightway 2 LCA framework, it's integrated into Brightway 2 itself. So for example, if I wanted to look at this activity in a little bit more detail, I can type in web. And as long as I have a version of the Brightway 2 web daemon up and running, it will bring up a new web page. And here I can also see the different BIOS flows in case there are no BIOS flows, but there are some text or inputs. I can click on locomotive, for example, and this will tell me what it takes to make a locomotive. And I can click through here even to BIOS flows. Go back and forth. These are just web pages like any other web page. And uh, yeah, so I can explore here, but actually today I want to talk mostly about the command line program. Okay. Well, we've looked at a bunch of different processes and different databases, and in fact, I can show different databases using LDB list databases. Here again, I could type in one of these numbers to switch. In fact, let's switch quickly to the USLCI database. I can also type in DB and the name of a database, for example, to switch back to EcoInvent 2.2. It's that simple. If you want to know what the commands are, the help screen is just the question mark and that will tell you all the different commands that are available. Now if I type in H, that will give me a history of the different activities and databases that I've looked at, starting at the most recent, number 0, I switched to Decoinvent 2.2, there's transport, freight, rail, going back to the transmission network, and some things I was looking at was I was preparing this presentation. I can also write this history to a file by typing in WH, write history, and that will write it to a file that I can look at in any text browser afterwards. What else is available? Well, there's only one other thing, and that's the search functionality. If I am right now in the EcoInvent 2.2 database, I can search, for example, for a phrase like brick. And then this will give me a list of different databases where the name has the string brick in it. Now, this search is not terribly sophisticated. For example, it is case sensitive. So if I typed in S brick, it wouldn't get anything. Um, but if I type in S brick with a lowercase b, then I can see that there are six different processes available. If I do have a current set of options, L will always give me the list of the current options. And I can type on, for example, brick at plant number four and switch my current process, active process, to that one. Uh, the activity browser does have integration to the read line library, so I can press the up arrow and down arrow and cycle through the different commands that I have typed. I can also type in, for example, L and hit tab, and that will show me the different commands that I can autocomplete that start with L. If I don't type in anything, or if I don't, ha if I have an empty prompt and I type in tab, that will show me all the different commands that are available. And that is the activity browser. If you so this is one of the components in EcoInvent, in Brightway, in Brightway 2, uh, version 1.0, which isn't quite there yet, but is getting quite close. There's a bunch of other neat things coming up, including uh, a lot of reworked visualizations, a lot of better um, tests, a lot better documentation, and a lot of help in getting Brightway 2 to be able to be installed by basically anybody on basically any computer. Uh, Brightway 2 is an open source framework. That means that you can also contribute, just like Bernhard did. Um, I encourage you to visit the webpage, which is Brightway LCA. Brightway LCA.org for information on Brightway. Thank you for your time.